picture the scene. It's midnight and parked in a car park, waiting. All is still and quiet. Then slowly they start to emerge from the distance, like a fog snaking its way across the ground. Hundreds of them, calling to each other, talking, laughing, singing. Teenagers emerging from a disco. The scene is truly joyful. The passenger door opens. My 15-year-old sits in. How was it, I ask? Yeah, good, he responds. Oh, seriously, fill me in. How was it really, I plead. Yeah, no, it was good. And in truth, that's as much as I'll ever hear. But what does he really mean by good? Does he mean that the DJ was talented or the cloakroom service and door staff were great at their job? That the music choice was spot on and the lighting and sound levels just perfect? Or is it that the DJ, the lighting technician and floor staff, security people all worked together with the proper leadership from a management team to produce an evening that he thought was valuable? And given he only gets out one night each term, that he was satisfied that he had chosen the right night on which to blow his allowance. Performance is about factors such as culture, mission, workflow, goals, environment, knowledge and skills, all working together to produce something that is valuable to the consumer. So performance, regardless of the organisation that produces it, whether it's a hurling team, a sports company, a government department or a teenage disco organiser, is about outputs or results. To ensure an overall performance, three levels of performance need attention. Organisation, process, individual. When the music choice has potential, but the DJ or lighting technician isn't, aren't talented, then performance will fail. Perhaps the DJ or other actors in the club are talented individuals, but they're just not working well together. Then performance may not be good. Therefore, performance needs to occur on three levels, the performer, the process and the organisation. Now, optimal performance is obtained when all three levels work in harmony. A breakdown at any one of the levels will prevent optimal performance. The organisational level establishes the necessary circumstances for the other levels of performance. So if a performance is not optimal, examine first the organisation's culture, policies, mission, goals and operating strategies because these factors trace the boundaries by which we define processes and jobs. In this instance, a safe environment for teenagers or young people to enjoy themselves is core to the organisation, so everything should stem from this core belief. The process level is where the actual work gets accomplished. So if performance is not optimal, we need to examine factors such as workflow, job design, required inputs and outputs, and the performance management procedures to see if these processes actually work and support the organisation's goal. In this case, queue management, job design to check for alcohol, procedures in place where alcohol is found on the person, or a process in place to alert parents or other supports where there's concern that the young person has already consumed alcohol. Now, individual performers within the organisation affect the processes. So if performance is not optimal, determine if the individual performance goals knowledge and skill, work environment, availability or support tools, coaching and feedback support the processes. Seldom is it true that only one set of factors adversely affects performance. When trying to examine why a performance problem might exist, it's critical to examine factors at all three levels of performance. It's important therefore to see performance management and this module in particular in the wider context of organisational and process performance. And it's why a performance management system cannot be developed or operate in isolation from the other two.